Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're so excited that so many of you could join us this evening for Martin Yan on food and well being. I'm Alex Elliott, the Senior Manager of Events and Engagement for the Public Programs Department of California Institute of Integral Studies, a nonprofit university in San Francisco. Now, let me first introduce our presenters, Chef Martin Yan and Meg Jordan, and then we will get right to the event. Meg Jordan has been Chair of Integrative Health Studies Master's Program at California Institute of Integral Studies for the past 13 years. Dr. Jordan is a clinical medical anthropologist, national board certified health and wellness coach, award-winning international health journalist, behavioral spe health specialist, registered nurse, author, and president of Global Medicine Enterprises. She was founding editor-in-chief of American Fitness Magazine and is emeritus board member of the National Board for Health and Wellness Coaching. Dr. Jordan also served as co-president of the National Wellness Institute Board, the first woman leader in the Institute's 40-year history and received its prestigious Lifetime Achievement Award. Yan can cook, so can you, has always been the motto of Martin Yan, chef extraordinaire and popular television host recognized from Shanghai to San Francisco. Promoting Chinese and Asian cuisine, making it easy for home cooks has been his lifelong mission. Born in Guangzhou in Southern China, Chef Yan is technically a second generation culinarian who was first inspired by his parents in the kitchen of their family restaurant. After receiving his chef training in Hong Kong, Chef Yan immigrated to the United States, receiving a master's degree in food science from UC Davis. Beginning in 1978, he began to host the now world famous Yan Can Cook Show, which grew to become one of the most popular and long lasting cooking programs on television in its 40 years of worldwide broadcast. It has won several James Beard awards. And now it's my pleasure to turn it over to Meg and Chef Yan. Oh, thank you so much. Alex, and thank you, everybody, public programs, for putting together this exciting event. And hello, <clears throat> how are you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. You know, I just want to say, first of all, that my family revered your show. We watched it religiously and loved it because we would go to these big, wonderful family Chinese restaurants, you know, with the huge round tables. And we would watch that little turnaround thing bring dish after dish in front of us that looked really amazing, but we figured we would never be able to prepare any of this. And then we would watch your show and you would break everything down into some good, simple, healthy techniques that we could figure out. So you've been revered in my family for a long time. And I just welcome you to this show and this dialogue. It's going to be a lot of fun. Are you ready for some questions? I am always ready. You know what? I am truly honored and uh, privileged to have the opportunity to work with your great team and to let people know what diet, how important diet is. So Absolutely. I'm ready. You know, especially during this time, you know, this global pandemic time that we're in right now while we're taping this show, we look at the fact that there's so much social isolation, but you have always said as a food ambassador, an international food ambassador, that food brings people together. But now with the restrictions that we all have on us, is it still possible? Of course, you know, recently, in, the, in, in fact, in the last, uh, since um, end of February, early part of March, I have hosted dozens of virtual cooking events and the Zoom and uh, reaching a lot of people. The US, everybody knows is a melting pot, okay? We always have a mixed audience, whether it's radio or television. And some of my guests are liberals and others are conservative. And I don't ask, and they don't tell me either. Good. You know, we have one common interest to Good. eat well. Focus on what we eat well and cook well along. Then we can get along a lot better. You know, people always can fight all they, all they want after dinner. But when we cook, we're all friends and allies in the kitchen. I hope you, under, yeah, I hope you all agree. Besides, I am the one that holding the big cleaver anyway. People yeah. don't want to yeah. fool around with when they see my big cleaver. Oh my gosh, I wonder if you've, you've been part of this tradition for a long time. You know, your mother had a restaurant in South China 
growing up. And so yeah. is that what actually inspired you? Were, in, were you in her kitchen? How did this all get started? Yeah, I, uh, I grew up in, in my mother's kitchen. In fact, my mother and my father actually uh, have a little restaurant. And I would assume that necessity is the mother of all inventions. When I first came to North America, I found work in a Chinese restaurant, working in the kitchen, washing dishes and helping to cut bone the chicken. And my kitchen training was what gave me the opportunity to do a lot of things and survive all the early winters in America. Oh, I followed that. I mean, there you were up in freezing Calgary all the way down to LA. You've been everywhere up and down this, this continent. And I think that I think that love of travel must be in you because you did a whole spice route tour. This is one of my favorite shows. In fact, you were looking at China and Malaysia and the spices from all these different places, which I tend to think of as medicine, being a medical anthropologist. But tell us what spice you love to cook with and why. You know, food, as uh, everybody knows, that food have no national, international boundary. Food brings everybody together. Every Chinese chef must be well acquainted with all the basic tastes, flavor, sweet, sour, spicy, hot, and all the spices that go into each dish. I started out as a chef in Southern China. All Cantonese cuisine is my forte. Over the years, I have traveled through China, all over China, from the north to the south, to the west, to the east, and work and learn from Greek chef and homemakers from different regions. So these days, the menu is a lot of eclectic and one might call, hey, pan Chinese, different flavor melt together. Chinese is such a vast, just like the US, such a vast treasure box of Greek cuisines. Why stay with just one? Oh, I can believe it. I mean, from Hunan, Shanghai, I've, I've yes. tasted them and relished in all of them. It's so sweet. I, I know that we'll be talking about what you consider every kitchen to have a standard like array of spices or flavors in them, but I'd also love you to talk now about, you know, there's there's been an effort, and I see this as a registered nurse and behavioral health specialist, yeah. for people to switch to a plant-based diet just because it seems to be healthier in the long run. All of our studies look at that, including a huge Chinese study but this heavy emphasis on lots of meat and lots of starches is something that people are trying to really cut back on. What's the healthiest way to eat in your estimation? Well, I am uh, in China, there's a, they, they, they have a very, very common, a popular saying, yin and yang. I'm a big believer of balance, yin and yang balance in our everyday life and in our diet. The Chinese philosophy of yin and yang serve really well. Now, nothing should be one-sided, okay? Now, animal protein must be well-balanced with a variety of fresh vegetable, seasonal vegetable, to create a healthy combination in each dish. And the same should be our philosophy of life. We cannot, if I love to drink, but you shouldn't overdo it. If you love to do certain things, key is balance. So in our life, just like in a diet, you have to have a lead a balanced diet. And you go to a typical Chinese restaurant, you see there's a lot of vegetable dishes mm -hmm. on the menu and nothing is overcooked, properly cooked. But at the same time, a lot of other dishes also have protein and vegetable combined together so in a mix. I will show you later on when I cook. But the yeah. thing is, in, 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 in Chinese cuisine, the most important thing is a lot of people don't realize in China, there's a lot of vegetarian restaurants, a lot of vegans, a lot of people, particularly the Buddhists, the Buddhism, in Buddhism, the people believe in Buddhism and they, they actually, like in Vietnam, like in uh, Taiwan, they actually practice vegetarianism. Uh, and nowadays we're lucky because there's a lot of protein-based, plant-based, Pro, plant protein and plant-based ingredients as well as meat in the market. So now you go to a fast food um, uh, uh, chain, you can actually order a plant-based burger anyway. I know, I know, I've tried one. Uh -huh. yeah. 
but I do know that switching to a plant-based diet is definitely healthier in the long run, and that's been the long tradition really throughout Asia. I think too that there's there's so many. This is another custom that I've seen when I was traveling in China, and when I was also just going to really good Chinese restaurants here. They often start with a soup, and it's oh, a, yeah. a clear soup sometimes. Is this a tradition? Yeah. I mean. Very much in um, in my household. Now you look at. I stand for a little bit so you can see. Yeah. For thirty five years, I have not gained one pound. My weight range from one hundred and thirty six to one hundred and thirty eight pounds for thirty five to thirty seven years, because I practice the yin and yang diet. Soup in the beginning of a meal is very very much very popular in southern China. And you go to a lot of restaurants in, in, Kent, in, in Canton and Hong Kong and places. The first thing they serve you is a clear soup. Just like you go to a Japanese restaurant. Right. They give you a little clear miso soup. Or they have a little few slices of seaweed and a few pieces of tofu. And you drink it. And the great thing about this is, this is like a cleanser. It cleanses your palate. It gets you ready. And also when you finish a clear soup, which is pretty rich, a chicken broth, or vegetable broth. The great thing about this is, this, it gave you the opportunity to really set it up and then you don't feel as hungry because before you eat anything, you have have a bowl of soup. Then you don't feel as hungry. It adds to that whole balance that you talked yeah. about. Yeah, well, right. Really I, I know the principles of balance through five elements, Chinese medicine and everything, you know, things in, in, in sync yeah. seasons with hot and cold, I mean, I had a kidney stone last week that was driving me crazy, but in Chinese medicine, they would say, well, there's a lot of damp heat going on and you're yin. Yeah, 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 damn, yeah, damn. Hot, oh. hot air and cool air, dampness. So, yeah. but anyway, the, I think, I think the, 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 the important thing is um, that it also helps when you have a soup, you have the soup, that what happens is they also help you to clean up, cleanse, not only cleanse your blood, it actually, it nurture is very nurturing. It's very nurturing. It is just like a a a, um, a, a clear a light soup to nurture and get everything ready. And and the, it just also serve as a source of liba libation during your meal. This yeah. is important. It sets the stage for your digestive system too. You yeah. know, I think that you've you've talked to us a lot about how Americans and North Americans and people everywhere can start to enjoy more vegetables, more of a plant-based diet. But I'll tell you, doesn't it take a lot more preparation? I mean, I know when I try to convince friends to do it, they say, oh, it's the washing and the cutting and this and the that. Uh, preparation time for making more vegetables. Talk about that. Well, uh, uh, in the old days, this is very true. But nowadays, you can go to a salad bar. And they just pick up the vegetables already cut up for you. You just That's buy this a combination of, of salad, and then you come back, it's already a stir-fried dish already cut up for you. And in fact, a lot of the supermarket, now you can actually buy a package of stir-fried vegetable with different combination with broccoli, cauliflower, carrot, celery, everything is already there. So I think um uh, in the old days, when worry about all of these, we don't have to worry about it anymore because lifestyle change and the, uh, the, the supplier and the supermarket are getting, preparing and offering things that people want, people use, people need. They're getting wise to us finally, you know? And yeah, yeah. You going after your master's degree at UC Davis on nutrition yeah, yeah. and food science. Uh, chef, you've seen a lot of change. Let's go back to the vegetable. Let's go back to the vegetable part. Okay. Uh, the, the, the great thing about this in, in Western cuisine, okay, and vegetable is always considered to be a side dish. They always cook to death. You know, uh, spinach is cooked to death. Everything that's cooked to death. The mushroom is cooked to death. But in Chinese cuisine, we often add vegetable into the main dish and cook everything together and never, never overcook. So yeah. when you overcook something, you know that you lose some of the heat sensitive vitamins like vitamin C and a lot of things is lost. And then also the text, the color, the texture and the nutrients is lost. So it's very important. You go to a typical good Chinese restaurant, they never, never overcook 
the vegetable. Oh. We actually, we actually cut down, actually in a true sense also, you cut down on the preparation of cooking time because when vegetable normally doesn't take too long to cook. So you cook the meat almost ready, you put the vegetable in and let the juice from the meat flavor your vegetable. So in the true sense, it's the healthiest way to cook. So you're telling us how to get the most nutritious value out of our food, but what are some of the, the techniques? I mean, is it uh, steaming or walking or boiling? Or yeah. What do you like doing? What are the best food techniques to get that most? Yeah, value? yeah, great question. Thank you. We have a popular saying, we all live to eat, but don't eat to live. And eating to live is basically survival. We are very, very much beyond that now because we live in a country of abundance. But the most important thing is, is a, it's not about quantity. It's about better quality of ingredients, fresh ingredients. The Chinese believe you eat with the season, you eat with the freshest, you okay. never overcook anything, whether it's vegetable or seafood. They never oversteam the fish until they dry it up. They never overcook the chicken until they dry it up. It's always marinated. So that's a mean is what good quality ingredient, whether it's protein, seafood, or vegetable. Eat better doesn't mean that eat more. You eat better. You eat quality. You eat quantity. Not quantity, but eat quality. Yeah, and that quality counts because it, it takes care of a deep level of hunger, too. If you don't get that nutrition in, you're always hungry. So yeah. tell me this. So, so the cooking technique, yeah, cooking technique also helps too because um, when you steam a double boil, just like the Chinese, you never overcook anything because everything is maintained uh, 100 degrees centigrade, 220, 12 degrees uh, below. So you never overcook it. So in Chinese cooking, the key is do not overcook. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. Yeah. Not use the smoke alarm as my timer yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. and, and rule number two, in Southern China is, puts a great emphasis on steaming and the technique, the preparation technique, the cooking technique. You do a lot of poaching, a lot of steaming, stir frying, braising, stewing. So you add less oil and that is not overcooking either. When you basically, the Chinese have been not invented, but Chinese have been practicing slow cooking low temperature, long time cooking for a long, long time. When you do stir fry, high temperature, short time. When you do poaching or you do double boiling, it's a little bit longer and you cook a, a, a much lower temperature. You don't destroy as much. So that's the reason why it is important. So through my entire career, this is what I do. I practice good, healthy cooking, okay? Thank you so much for those techniques. I'll tell you, it's enlightening, but I'll t some people are, are wondering, does this take a lot of extra gadgets in the kitchen? Should I fall for every brand new gadget advertised on my Bed Bath & Beyond flyer? <laughs> no, 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 definitely not, definitely not. You know why? Because in a typical Chinese kitchen, you okay. have a wok or stir fry pan, and I have a knife, I'll show you. All you need is a, a knife, a good knife, because you do a lot of cutting and chopping anyway, a cutting and slicing. So one of my best friends to stand by in my kitchen is my Chinese chef knife and a well-seasoned wok, if you have a cast iron wok. So they are not only, uh, il, il, uh, um, uh, they're not electric, not digital, and not controlled by satellite or artificial intelligence. You just you and your knife in your on your hand it's not electric knife but a knife so so good food started with great ingredient and great imagination uh, and to make sure you take care of all your kitchen friends like a good walk and a nice sharp knife and that's the key that's it good and don't fall for all the other gadgets thank you for that well i you think you've great advice you've been offering people and yeah. i also know that Right now, so many people are having to stay home, shelter at home during this, that they're really kind of getting sick of their own cooking. And there's something that we know in medical anthropology and in medicine called boring palate syndrome, where if you're not intriguing your palate and your tongue, you're actually not giving the brain certain stimulation. 
lots of new studies that I'm following particularly on this. So at a time, you can offer these first time cooks at home who have been so used to going to restaurants or getting carry out and they say, I'm sick of my own cooking. What can you offer them to get out of that boring syndrome? Um, you know, first of all, they always say variety is the spice of life. You know, even I give you the a truffle, I give you caviar, I give you um, a goose liver. But if you eat it, the same thing over and over again, you get fed up, you get tired. So the key is, as I mentioned earlier, the great thing about America, is America is a great melting pot. People from all over the world, all the cuisine, all the culture, all the colorful um, costumes, music, everything coming from all over. So we never can get tired of trying new things. So there are a lot of restaurants, even in Chinese restaurant, now you, you, have, you have Thai restaurant, uh, ramen restaurant, Korean restaurant, Cambodian restaurant, um, uh, Mediterranean restaurant, Malaysian. Iranian yeah. restaurant, all kinds of restaurants. So when you go out to eat, the key is to try out different things. Open up your palate, open up your mind, and open your heart out and to receive and enjoy the cuisine that offer to us in America in this great country. The variety, you see. So that's the reason why a large industry of hard working, particularly during the pandemic, a lot of the restaurant is suffering and a lot of a very good number, great number of my friends as well as colleagues are hard working in the restaurant. They're not getting all the support. So I hope all of you go out and do some takeout and support them, give them support. And it is also true. Everybody can learn to cook the basic, just like other, uh, all the other things that I have just made. You know, I make paella from my own kitchen, but I do it Chinese way, I add some Chinese element. I add some shiitake mushroom, I add some sesame sauce, I add some fish sauce, oyster sauce, and Chinese sausage. But, you know, so maybe that remind me in our time is in the Spain, in the Spain, in Spain, because I spent some time in the Spain during a, a river cruise and I love paella so much, I decided to do it. So I turned that into Chef Yen's personal version of the seafood rice paella. Sounds so delicious. <laughs> this, is, this is why we call you an international chef is because you have combined these flavors and flavor enhancers and spices and foods and vegetables and yet you still bring them into this incredible healthy cuisine you know which is primarily plant-based little bits of meat here and there whatever is needed fish yeah. absolutely this is so great you know there's I, i've studied something as a medical anthropologist and that is that whenever a cultural exchange of food and spice and flavors takes place and, and includes planting and harvesting methods as well. There's always been this sort of giant leap forward in our civilizations from the opening of the spice trade route from Asia across North Africa, of course, over Europe from Pan Pacific travel back and forth, even early in South America, you know, there has been all sorts of investigations on why do we take this sort of big giant leap forward in civilized life whenever we exchange food, spice, and flavors. And that's where we're studying this neurobiological effect right now that actually the stimulation on the tongue relates directly to the brain. And with every explosion of every punctuated kind of growth like this of sharing food, across the world. There's been greater cooperation, greater understanding. So you are, you are truly, when I say an international food ambassador, I, I mean it with great respect for the way you have brought people together. Yeah, yeah great. Uh, I'd like to, um, to uh, uh, comment a little bit more on that. Great. For instance, for centuries, you know, we talk about food. Every time when a new food, a new cuisine introduced, a new spice, it, it, it bring up a lot of um, uh, social, um, economical, and cultural, not upheaval, but excitement. Uh, throughout the years, you know that the, the, the Chinese have the noodle and the meme, and then the Italian have 
the pasta, right? So nowadays, everybody have all kind of, you, you, go to, you go to Japan, they have ramen, okay? The Chinese Italian have been fighting over the origin of pasta. Well, let us settle it in the kitchen. Cooking Chinese noodle is like in a, in a pesto sauce. Now, how about a dan dan noodle using angel hair pasta, right? So all of these are cultural exchange. When cultural exchange, people exchange, people learn from each other and we become a better world and a better economy politically, economically, in terms of exchange. So like I said, have fun with it and then you never get bored when you use different ingredients. Oh, I love that. Thank you. You really have a very deep in your bones understanding of this. You know, this is who you are. This is from your upbringing in China, your mom's restaurant, whatever you were doing in her kitchen, your family, to all the international exchanges and, and um, extraordinary shows that you've done on, on PBS and elsewhere where you traveled. It was just exciting to watch and, and to understand how this uplifts our spirit and makes us connect with each other. You know, I, I have been very fortunate, like you. You know, we travel around the world. I normally, uh, pre-pandemic, I actually travel about 250 days a year worldwide. We travel from Europe to uh, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Northern Europe, and then all over Asia, all over China, Australia, everywhere. The only place I've never visited is Russia. Russia. And <laughs> and also South America, uh, South Africa. But I have traveled all over. I work with all kinds of people, home cooks. And some of the home cooks, you, you should be surprised. Some of the home cooks are so good. And then they produce dishes. They've been just like, you go to Malaysia, you go to Vietnam, you go to Singapore. And people, elderly people, have been cooking the same dish, the same single dish for 60 years, 70 years. And they sell it on the street. And then I guarantee you, that's the best dish you have ever tasted. Oh, it's some of the best street food I've ever had. Yeah, street yeah. food, that's it. And it's interesting too, to see how every place that I've gone, including Russia and Kiev, has its favorite fermented food, you know, which we know is so good for the healthy gut as well. Oh and yeah. Foods, um, whether it's pickles or sauerkraut or tempeh, you know, you have an appreciation for those too. Well, talking about fermented food, you know, soy sauce is fermented, fish sauce is fermented, miso is fermented, uh, kimchi is fermented. Oh, I was just recently did a show called Martian's uh, uh, Cook Korean Food. And I was so amazed in every single village, every single uh, restaurant that I visit, the chef and the home make, home, home, home make, uh, home, home cook in all the villages. They actually make their own kimchi. They make their own soy sauce and own chili sauce. They grow the chili, they harvest the chili, they make their own pickle chili. And then they also pickle a lot of things. Kimchi is not just pickle vegetable, pickle meat, pickle seafood, pickle fish, just like sauerkraut just like uh, anchovy, a lot of these are pickled. A lot of them are because of preservation. In the old days, there's no refrigerator and there's no refrigeration. So you gotta preserve your food. So pickling, fermentation, drying, and um, uh, oiling it and salting it become a preservative technique that you can preserve the food. You can survive the entire winter. Had a beautiful understanding of traditional foods and traditional food preparation. And I think now we're all kind of itching to see you prepare a little something. So, oh, yeah. And this section of talking <laughs> together and move into a cooking portion. The kitchen. Now, this is my home kitchen. And I've been cooking and sharing my love of food, my passion of food to thousands and millions of people around the world. And today I want to show you a few things. Um, we're cooking, doing something healthy, okay? I have a few dish that I'm gonna show and tell that I have prepared. But I wanna show you a dish that you will find in many Chinese restaurants, particularly Cantonese restaurants, soup of the day. 
Here, I'm going to show you. Okay. These are the ingredients. This is very popular. You go to a lot of Chinese restaurants, you see this. You have a whole chicken, black skin chicken, silken chicken. The feather is silken white, and the skin is dark. Okay, it's called uh, dark skin chicken. Very, very popular. And then I use, instead of doing that, I use big drumstick. I use big drumstick, okay? And then here is mountain yam. This is mountain yam. I slice it, and this is the dry mountain yam. And this is the fresh mountain yam from here, okay? This is very popular in Korea, in Japan, and in China. So I have this ingredient. I also have goji berry. This is really, really good. And this is really one of the most popular. In fact, you go to a supermarket, you can actually buy goji berry as a snack. And you can actually eat goji berry as a snack. Mm -hmm. Nice and sweet, very healthy. Good. It's good for your eye too. Yeah. Now, of course, this is ginseng. Oh. Fresh ginseng from Wisconsin. And this is the dry ginseng also from Wisconsin. And then you can buy wild Wisconsin ginseng or farm Wisconsin ginseng. And the wild ginseng costs about maybe about five to 10 times more than the regular um, farm ginseng. And then we also have some ginkgo nut. Now you go to Korea, Japan, and different part of China, they have ginkgo nut trees. Ginkgo nut trees. This is ginkgo nut. This is, and they actually in Japan you can buy ginkgo nut peel. This is also very good. We have ginger. Ginger is very good for your throat, and you have irritation and you have infection. And this is good, also good for your flu. And then of course shiitake mushroom. So what I'm going to do is I water branch this. So this way it will be nice clear soup. I water branch this and I put all the rest of the stuff into this container right here. I have one chicken breast. A chicken, you can use chicken breast, you can use chicken thigh. Now the broth is very clear, not much fat because I poach the chicken and get rid of some of the rendering, some of the fat. Then I put some of the stuff in. I put ginseng, okay? And I put yeah. fresh and dry ginseng. Why I put both? Because the fresh one, after that, you can eat it. It's nice and sweet and crunchy. The dry one is basically for flavor. And then I have a couple piece of ginger. And then I have a couple piece of shiitake mushroom. Now this is a dry shiitake mushroom I will show you. Very, it adds flavor to our broth to give them more dimension, like the umami, okay? And then I have goji berry right here, goji berry. And put a tiny bit of the tiny bit of this here. And then I also have a tiny bit of ginkgo nut. I put the ginkgo nut right here, ginkgo nut. And then mountain yam. This is the mountain yam. I peel it and I slice it. And this is really, really wide. This is the dry mountain yam. I also put this. And for a lot of the Chinese herbal tonic, they use all of these. They use the dry one. They buy the fresh one. It's perfect. And then after that, I will put this and I turn this on. I'll turn this on. Look at it. I put everything here already. Oh, I want to show you. You can see all of these. Can you see that? Yeah. Beautiful. Very good. And then I put this over here and then I turn it on Same. and I steam it. I let it steam. Now this is called double boil. That means this is also slow cooking because everything is cooked by the steam. The steam is at the most 212 degrees. Okay. And that's the reason why we do this. When this is done, I'm going to let it Get ready. The second dish, I'm ready to cook. And the second dish is, oh, look at this. This is our second dish. But before I do the second dish, this is vegetarian stir fry. We, earlier we talked about a lot of people are talking about plant-based protein, which is also healthy, but you gotta have 
a variety of plants, a lot of variety of vegetables to give you a balanced diet, okay? Now, this is a tonic soup. And we drink this, you go to a lot of Chinese restaurants, particularly Cantonese restaurants, you can order this. Sometimes they can go anywhere from uh, $10 a serving to about $100 US a serving, depends on what kind of ingredient they put in. They put, whether you put um, um, a wild ginseng or whatever. Now, we're talking about the tonic. You know, in this package here, the package, the package here, you go to the store, you can buy packages like this, okay? Packages like this. This are uh, combination of Chinese herbs. Soup. soup, all these herbs for soup of the day. Now, look at, let me, sh let me show you some of these. Here, I'm gonna show you this. Look at this. In this particular one, you got red date. You got tangerine peel. Wow. You got figs. You got ginseng. <laughs> And you got this wonderful, uh, we call um, uh, Adelno, Adelno Pora, Adelophora, Adelophora. Um, and then the Long An, this is the dragon eye. And all of these are most common herbs that they use in a variety of um, tonic soup and herbal soups, okay? So these are the most common. Now come to the second one, look at this. Look at this. This is, look, look at all of these. Just like you go to Chinatown. You remember we, when you go to Chinatown, there's a Chinese herbal shops, right? The herbal shop, they have a lot of cabinet. Just, yep. like you go to a, um, just like you go to a pharmacy, they have all the medicine cabinet. That's and you go, to Korea, yeah? Yeah. you go to Korea, yeah. you go to Korea, you remember you go to Korea and Japan, they have that too, a lot of, and then this, let me, let me quickly go through this. Now, this is, Fix, dry fix, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is almond, and this is almond, okay? Look at the almond. Yeah. And this is soya beans, okay? And this soya bean, and this is ginger slices, ginger slices, okay? And this is the mountain yam again. And this is the lily bud, the dry lily bulb, lily bulb, okay? And this is what they call poly go. Polygonetum, polygonetum. It's like a poly, bark. Yeah, think about and a little leaf, okay? The leaf fruit slice it thin. So this is another combination. And then now let's come to, to this one. That's okay. Like seeing these, I've never seen them all like this. Yeah, yeah, you've never seen that. <laughs> the, the, the Chinese herbal is store is just like um, a museum. Of, mm -hmm. a, 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 plan, a planetarium, yeah. a museum of dry fruit. Now, everybody know that actually modern mass medicine is all derived from mm -hmm. traditional medicine. Okay. And they, by trial and error for thousands of years in different parts of the world, and then people try different herbal remedies. And then they find, oh, this is good for this. This is good for that. It's about trial and error. Now, look at this. We started out with this. This is called the Godono, uh, this is called Cod Kalo Nopsin, Nopsi. <laughs> this is Dong Sim, Dong Sum, Dong Sum. And this is- We're gonna trust you on that. Bai Chi, now this is the Dong Sum right here. Oh, that okay. Can you see that? Dong Sum, okay. Yeah. And this is Bai Bakke, look at this, this is dry. And this is Dragon, Fruit, maybe they did a dry dragon eye. Like and this is Dong Gui, this Angelica, Angelica. Oh, and this is licorice, licorice, okay? And this is Abtrati, um, we call A T R A C T Y L O D E S, okay? Bai Su, in Chinese it's called Ba Su, okay? And this is <clears throat> white peony. And then this is Fok Ling. Wow, look at this. And this is Fokling. And then Sok Day. And this is Poria. <laughs> this Poria Fok Day. Black. And so, so all of these, look at that. All of these are wonderful herbs. Thousands and thousands of them. When they put it together, this is how they do it. They put it together and put in a pot and double boil them mm -hmm. for about two to four hours. And then you drink the liquid. 
that is a tonic. That's a healthy tonic. Because all the goodies slowly, slowly sip into your tonic, your soup. Then you drink them to replenish, okay? And it's, it cleanses and they replenish. Now, these are some of, this is another one that I drink regularly uh, in the winter. It get rid of your damn element in your body. And you know what this is, right? It's this is the lotus blah blossom, lotus blossom. Yeah. Wow. And this is, this is barley. This is the raw barley. This is the pop, cook, prepare pop barley. And this black IP, and this is goji berry. I have been drinking this every week for the last um, four months. Yeah. And I feel good. Yeah, it cleanses it cleans me. It, it cleanses my whole body. It gets rid of the damp, particularly in the winter. And it's a little foggy. Where I live is a little foggy. And it's really damp and misty. So this is to get rid of my dampness in my body. So that's the reason why. So these are the... A few of the things that I choose out of maybe about 5,000 different herbs and spices, they identify Shen the Chinese herbal uh, a Bible of the Chinese herbal medicine. And yeah. these are just some of the common ones. Now, this is what we're going to have. I want to show you. I want you, you to take a look at oh. after you double boil it for approximately two hours or three hours. Look at how beautiful. Look at that, look at how beautiful. I'm gonna show you to take this out. Now, this is a gadget you should have. This is a robotic gadget. You put this over here and you put this over here and you lift this up like this. Look at that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Then I'm gonna let it continue to cook at the back so we don't have to waste this. This is really good. Now, I wanna show you we're gonna do a stir fry dish okay. with this. Now look at this. this is Let's go through the ingredient. Now these are all healthy, and you do not have to have protein meat to come up with all the wonderful, wonderful nutrients. A balanced nutrient. Here, I have oyster mushroom, the raw oyster baby mushroom. mushroom. They're beautiful. And Everything looks we so have shiitake mushroom, squash. Really and then we have green onion, we have celery, we have red pepper, we have ginkgo nut, we have, this is cloud ear. This oh. is black fungus, black fungus, cloud ear. But here, yeah, this is what gives you the calcium as well as plant protein, a lot of vegetable protein right here. This is pressed spicy tofu. And I want to show you going to find all these things? Uh, you can buy them in any Asian store, any Asian store. There, if We're lucky to live in America and everywhere you go, you, there is always an Asian store. The Asian store carry all of these. The good thing about this is they are vacuum packed. You put it in the fridge, it lasts for months. Oh, you does. put it in the fridge, freezer, it lasts for years. Oh. Okay, because it's already well seasoned, already pressed and a lot of things. Okay. There's the famous... Now look at this. I'm going to show you when it cut, it looks like this. It looks like this. Okay. Slightly. Look at this. It looks like this. And I cut it at an angle. I cut it in half first and I cut it one, two, three, and four. Now, look at this. This is loaded with protein, plant protein. I'm going to show you how quickly it is to. Good. What kind of oil? First, I heat this up. And I use, now this is something I want to show you. I use not the ordinary oil. I use the oil can withstand high temperature without smoking. Most of the oil smoke around 370 degree, 380 degree max. But this one, 480, this is 485 degree Fahrenheit before it smoke. This is called the Camellia tea seed oil. It's a tea seed oil, the Camellia flower tea seed oil. And then this, the great thing about this is, I'm gonna use this, okay? The great thing about this is, it, it is natural, organic, is mm, extracted, virgin extraction. In people in Southern China and people in Taiwan, they know how good it is. Sometimes you can even put this in your face as a lotion and it's amazing, okay? It is, it is wonderful, it's loaded with vitamin A and also, 
antioxidant, a lot of antioxidant. There's also the one of the zero cholesterol. Okay. Oh, now, yeah. let me see. That's important. Yeah, very important. Now I have garlic. I want to show you how easy to mince garlic. I have a piece of garlic here and a piece of ginger here and a couple oh. of pieces of ginger, a couple of pieces of garlic. I want to show everybody how easy it is to mince garlic. Already <laughs> minced. Easy with it. Okay? That's how we do it. And then this is ginger mince. Now, you do not believe that I actually mince it, right? Look at this. I actually have minced it. Look at that. That's my I am, I'm oh, telling you, I actually have minced this. Look at that. See? <laughs> That's how to do it. Garlic and ginger. Why I use ginger? Why I use garlic? Garlic and ginger is widely used as a, not only as a flavoring, but also as has me, me, medicinal benefit. Ginger, particular. You go to Indonesia, you go to Vietnam, you go to Japan, you go to China. When you get a sore throat, when you have a little food, hey, ginger tea. <laughs> okay. And I have garlic and ginger here to give the flavor because I want to have something really healthy. Okay. And then when this is done, I will stir this. So you're actually cooking it? Do you want to see it? Yeah. Loosened. Very, very soft. Now, first of all, I turn this on and it's hot. I use high temperature so I'm never over, over, overcooked the vegetable. But it's not smoking. That's why I use the healthy oil. The oil you use only about a couple of teaspoons anyway. So don't one little bottle will last you for a long, long time. But in any way, when this is nice and fragrant, you put all the ingredients in common sense. Things that take longer to cook, you put it in first. What takes it longer to cook? We're gonna squash and mushroom. Starchy stuff. squash and mushroom. Okay, celery. You put it in first. Oh, I forget to tell you. I even have. This is the is soybean sprout. This is very healthy. You go to a Korean restaurant, kimchi. They always give you the little the little appetizer. Okay, and then all of this I put it in. Okay, yes. separately. And then I want to show you how amazing this is. Oh, look at this. I put a tiny bit of broth or water. I'm going to get a tiny bit of water and a tiny bit of water. And this is my broth. I put a tiny bit of broth and put it right here. Ah, oh, look at that. This is beautiful. And then let it steam. Now, this is the best way to do things. You cover it. Just steam it. It's called wok, fry, and sear. I want to show everybody how easy it is to remove. Some of the people have watched me around the world, and I want to show you how easy it is to remove the seed from the bell pepper. Look at that. You seesaw. You seesaw this, right? You seesaw, 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 seesaw. Done. <laughs> OK, look at that. Very simple. Look at that. And then after that, you can actually, Very actually good. cut it up and go, look how fast is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then this way you can have some additional bell pepper to give that nice color contrast in your dish. And that's how amazing this is. Now, let me show you. It doesn't take too long to cook. And talking about vegetarian, a lot of people don't realize they we can actually find yeah, gorgeous. Oh. mushroom oyster flavor sauce. Okay, it's from mushroom, make from mushroom. We put it. This is this is vegetarian. Yeah. All I need is about two teaspoons, and then a tiny tiny bit of. Oh, perfect! You see that? Look how beautiful. Yeah. You can buy them in uh, all the supermarkets. All right, we'll look for that. Yeah, nice and one. then now, if you want to, now you are you are anthropology, you are the culinary anthropology, and this we earlier we talk about fermented. This is fermented soybean curd, fermented tofu right here, and this is a spicy fermented tofu right here, and this would add flavor. So if you open it up and put a tiny bit of these. Look at that. Put a tiny bit of these into it. So your your dish will a have bit. a totally different dimension of flavor. So 
I put a tiny bit of this, a little bit of this. Look at that. This is a fermented bean curd. All I need is a tiny bit. I don't want to overdo it, over okay? It. Because I want the vegetable, the flavor, the color of the vegetable all come up. And right before I do it, I put a few dash of sesame seed oil. That's a few dash. Look at sesame seed oil. And yeah. that's it. That's very you want it, no, it's very. Look at how colorful this is. If you want something hot and spicy, hey, look at this. That's a few drops of chili oil. So ah, look at that. I want to show you. I want to show you how amazing this is when it's done. Okay. And it doesn't take too long to cook at all. And that's the beauty. No, you've only been cooking it about five, seven minutes or so. Yeah, yeah. Though that's the reason why. That's the reason why the great thing about this is you can actually cook the dish. All the stir-fried dishes is in the preparation. When it's prepared, the actual cooking time is three to four and a half minutes. And because of that, I want to show you right here, nothing is overcooked and everything is in the original color, the original shape. Look how beautiful. Uh -oh. Look at that. Now, our friends from all over the US and all over the world, this is a vegetarian dish so for you. So okay? Good. And that's amazing, right? So, oh, in yeah. a true sense, in a true sense, I think this is done. I'm gonna take it out too. I'm gonna continue to let it cook a little bit. And then, People always ask me, Martin, this is amazing. Look at all these dishes. And we let it, let it steam. And then watering. I want to I want to remind everybody to save money and wow. to really enjoy cooking. As I mentioned earlier, you have a good stir fry pan or wok. Okay, this is non-stick. So Invested. When you want to cook healthy, you use less oil. So the way to do it is use a well-seasoned wok or a non-stick frying pan or non-stick wok. Secondly, use high temperature in short time when you do stir fry. It's very, very fast. So you don't overcook them. Look at the steam. Look how beautiful this is. Look at it. Close up and the steam is very steamy. Look at that. It's amazing. huh? And high temperature. Of course, if you want you can do it like the restaurant to touch up a little bit. Why I'm still steaming this. Look at how beautiful this is. No, Look at that. Colors are gorgeous in it. And they're firm, so nothing is mushy, right? It's all nothing is overcooked, nothing is mushy. And it's, it's just so beautiful. And that's the reason why, yeah. you know, cuisine brings all of us together. We learn from each other. And I also want to show everybody from around the US, how you can save money by boning your chicken. I want to show you how important it is we have a perfect sharp knife in your kitchen as your good friend. Now, here I have show you, this is the one that I used. This is the one that I used, okay? And it come with this little box like this, okay? I want to show you. A sharp knife is a safe knife. I want to show you how sharp this knife is. This is paper towel. Two pieces of paper towel, okay? There's two pieces. Hold it. One here and up, oh, two pieces, okay? Uh, and then from two pieces, you fold it. It's four. And then it's eight. And then it's 16. I want to show you when you have a sharp knife. One cut. Sharp knife. Oh, yeah, that's sharp. When you have a sharp knife, Makes it is a safe knife because you don't force yourself. Now, the true test of a good sharp knife is use paper, a uh, 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 newspaper, you slice it. But this is even more a true test. Yeah, paper tower. Crumples. Very soft, very hard to handle. I want to show you how fast this is. One. Look at this. Incredible. Yes. <laughs> That was my this daughter's is, complaint was she come to my house and I had dull knives. She said, well, oh. <laughs> I so will cool. send you one as a gift, don't worry. <laughs> now, now let me show you. She's scared of it. Let me show you the difference. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, and eight. Now, you are anthropology, uh, anthropologist, and you know that in different culture, different belief, different taboo, different tradition, different heritage. And then in Asia, number eight is a good luck number. Number eight is lucky. Number four is a bad luck number. No. Number nine, number eight is a good luck number. Now, when I cut it like that, let me show you. When you have a sharp knife, this is what you have. Yes, eight pieces. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> nice, clean cut. Chinese paper cutting. When you travel to China, in different parts of China, they actually have paper cutting artists who use a scissor to cut. I use my knife to do it. It's it so okay. cool. It's now cool. I want to show everybody why I'm doing this. I don't think I've ever deboned a chicken. I'm going to get it. I'm going to show you. Now look at this. This is done. I am removing this. And then I have uh, this too, take it out. Beautiful. Ah, amazing. Be careful, okay? Yeah. The most important thing is a uh, pot holder. Let, let's get a pot holder just to, to play safe. I hold onto this opponent like this, and I put this right over here. Ah, look at that. This is what we have done. And yeah. this is the dish that we will show you earlier. And this is the stir fried dish. And then I have another dish show and tell. This is pan sear halibut, halibut. or black cod over soba noodle. Look at that soba noodle. Very, very clean taste. And then I have another dish. And this is amazing. What's that? And this is another wonderful thing. Look at that. This is steamed chicken. Yeah. Steamed chicken with shiitake mushroom and a garlic flavor sauce. And this is edible flour, pea, pea from the pea shoot oh, so from my garden. And I have all of these from my garden. And this is also grown in my garden. Look is at that. Parsley and then yeah. I have another dish for you. <laughs> okay, look at that. <laughs> look at all the things that I, I show you. This. It's a dish that everybody can make around the country, around the world. I use Fuji apple, carrot, and chicken. I want to show you. We have chicken. We have a spoon so you can scoop it out so you can peel. I have apple, Fuji apple. I have carrot. I have chicken. Look at that. And this soup is so healthy and so wonderful. And so nourishing and so powerful. The whole, the whole family is gonna love it. So great. now I'm gonna show you, talk about all the things that we have been talking about. I'm gonna show you how to bone a chicken in 18 seconds. You show me okay? this, I'll stop buying those pre roasted I want the people who have never seen, seen it before. Uh, please pay attention because I only have one chicken. Okay. And then I want to show everybody here is a chicken. Okay. And this happened to be a free range chicken cost me a little bit more, mm -hmm. but everybody know why I should do this. The reason is when you go out to buy a chicken breast, a chicken thigh already cut up, you pay a lot more money, the chicken breast will cost you 495 to 695 a pound depends on where you are kosher 695 okay depends on where you buy it okay which city and where and what a supermarket but you can actually bone your chicken very simply and then you use different part of the chicken to do different things and use the carcass to make my soup stock and yeah. that's how I do it okay I now, yes. now let me show you once again, how it, you should properly hold onto the chef knife. Here is the knife that I have designed. Full tank. This is full tank right here. Mm -hmm. Triple rivet, very durable. When you and also there's a perfect contour here. You see the contour because yes. my finger is here, so it does not hurt because of the curve. Most of the Chinese chef knife do not have this curve. Okay. And then when you hold on to a knife, always hold on to a knife like this. Index, thumb, 
and three finger here. Perfect. See, right here. You hold on Push to it. Oh. Yeah, hold on to it. Perfect contour. Yeah. Okay. Perfect contour of your knife. And not only that, you hold on to it properly with firm grip. Now, I want to show everybody how wonder, wonderful it is. Bone your own chicken. Not only do you save money, it's actually a lot of fun. You can make use. When you go out to buy um, a chicken cut up, they still charge you for the chicken carcass because they have to cut up the chicken. That's the reason why you have to pay more. Okay. Not only that, um, it costs them probably uh, the, uh, the butcher probably make about $60 an hour. Okay. So now look at this. I can do it in 18 seconds, but I will slow down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Agree? Agree? If I go too fast, we'll be done. Yeah, okay. I don't know. You're pretty funny. You're probably going to do it fast. This, <laughs> this is the wishbone. This yeah. is the breastbone. I will have one cut on one side of the breastbone, another cut on the other side of the breastbone. I'll turn it upside down immediately. And I turn it up and one cut along the back all the way. So I basically cut up the chicken in half in terms of the skin. I cut it in half. So then I hold on to this and I disjoint this. And I hold on to this and I disjoint this and I pull it out. Now I'm ready. Okay. Ready. Goodbye, chicken. You can't you count three, two, one. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. One cut, another cut. Oh, no, no, one other cut. Hold on, this, this, this John, this whole chicken breast comes oh. out like that. Chicken breast comes out. And hold on to this, and then you look at it. And that chicken thigh comes out like that. And then this is the last piece of the tenderon right here. You push it and you cut it like that. And then you turn it to the other side. You disjoint this and you push it like that. And then you hold on to this and you push it like that. And then the last piece of the tenderon comes out like this. And this is the last piece of tender. And this is the chicken carcass. Look at that. Amazing, amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and then I want to show you, I want to show all the people from around the country, around the world, how easy it is to do it. Now here, if you buy this in a supermarket, just this piece alone, yeah. $4.95 a pound. You buy the whole chicken, $1.34, $1.54 a pound, okay? I will show you how easy it is to remove this chicken breast. You hold onto your knife properly. Use the tip of your knife. You will, wah, the whole thing comes out. Fantastic. Look at that. 495. Okay. And then I want to show everybody how easy it is to actually make a drumstick. You can make a drumstick out of these. Okay. Yep. Make a drumstick out of these. That's Look at it. Amazing. And then you can also. Make a drumstick out of these. Let me show you. Here. Yeah, me. this is the chicken wing. I want to show you. I have one cut right next to the jaw. One little cut right here. And then I push this. Look at that. I push this and the whole thing comes out. And both bone comes out. Look at that. You got another kind of... The both stuff. bone comes out like that. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. What and then you? I remove the smaller piece of bone. This is the smaller piece of bone. I remove it like that. Yes. And then I remove the wing tip, okay? The wing tip, I put it in my broth. And then you know what? I have a drumstick I've seen right those. here. I wondered how they made them. Look at that. Look at yeah, that. and then you can save a whole bunch of drumsticks. So normally when I bone my chicken, I'll buy three or four chicken. So I have a whole bunch of these six or eight of these, then I can use it for different things. And then I use this for lemon chicken. And I use this, cut up this to make Kung Pao chicken or General Joe's chicken. And I use this for stock pot. Several so, you. right, so each one chicken, you can save it for all kinds of dishes. And that's the beauty of doing things. Now, of course. Um, that was fantastic. I've never uh, seen it. Chinese New Year is coming uh, February the 12th, right? February 12th. February 12th, the Chinese New Year. The Chinese celebrate New Year with a lot of food. And 
I want to make sure everybody eat healthy too. and cook healthy and eat healthy. That's the whole um, um, event we're talking about, the whole meeting, the whole seminar today is about eating healthy and trace your root and appreciating others' culture and cuisine and be amazing. Be amazing is to the opportunity to get to know more people, to make new friends, okay? So I wanna make sure um, all of you get opportunity. Oh, another thing that I wanna tell you, every morning I will drink this. Yep. I would have pistachio nut, pistachio nut with avocado. Avocado. Avocado, pistachio nut in a smoothie. It looks like it's all blended. And, uh, this and banana, banana smoothie, okay? And a lot of people, Everything I do is about health. Now, people ask, a lot of people don't eat pistachio nut like this. They just eat it as a snack, but mm -hmm. this is the way to go. So Besides good. stir fry, I also crush it and put it in my Kung Pao chicken. And this is very high level of wonderful and saturated fatty acid and put a potassium, very high in potassium. And the great thing about this is they can also suppose lower your chance of cardiovascular disease and cutting down and, um, and also bursting with wonderful fibers, minerals, and unsaturated fat. So use it, this is good. Keep your cholesterol and your okay. blood sugar in check. That's why Start your day in a bit. I drink this every day, healthy, okay? And I would like to um, also uh, remind you, just in case, you have any question, ask for um, recipe. Well, look at this. You can actually, you can actually scan this, okay? You can actually scan it right in front of the, the, the firecrackers and, and, um, and get some more recipe, uh, some healthy cooking tips from me. And I'll be happy to do it because I introduce ingredients like this soba noodle. This is the soba noodle, look at that. Very, very healthy, soba noodle. And we use- Available, I um, you know people are gonna want these recipes. And yeah, uh, please, please uh, scan the, uh, the, um, the, the, the QR code and get a recipe from us. And I will be happy to send you a lot of information about that. And then of course, uh, for those, for you, and you, you, um, you have been um, the, not only the expert, but also pioneer in um, food anthropology. And you, because your work, you bring people together, closer together, and I'm gonna send you oh, one good. of these. Oh my okay? God. <laughs> or, or if you prefer, I can send you one of these, a smaller <laughs> one. This is for women's hand, and this is for men's hand, but they're both razor sharp. And well, then I, I also will show, send you one of these, when you want to keep your, your, your knife sharp, this is diamond sharpening steel, it's flat. How does that work? Yeah, so when you, when you use this, you put your hand hold onto it, in here, because it's flat, you go one, two, three, four, five. Very, very sharp. So I'll send you one of these as a special gift, yes. okay? So now. Thank you, Jeff. Just Thank in you. case you have never seen any, uh, just in case you have never, never use a knife and I have designed this little fi finger guard for you. A you finger. put your finger, yeah. put it right here. So oh. when you cut, you protect your finger, look at this. Oh, is that brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. look at that, yeah. look at that. You just protect your finger. So we'll send you a finger guard. But anyway, uh, if you're interested in that, you can scan the QR code. But now let's have some Q and A questions, just in case you have any questions for people locally or around the country or around the world. All right, I'm gonna field some for us right now. And we've got a question from Ronald. When do you use glutinous rice flour? And when is sweet rice flour the better choice? Thanks Ronald for that question. In general, in general, sweet rice and glutinous rice has similar texture. Mm -hmm. because the rice kernel is shorter. So the amylopeptin is more than amylose. So this way when it's cooked, it is much stickier, much more moist, mushier than 
the long grain rice or the medium grain rice. The Japanese sushi, they use medium grain rice. The long grain rice is used by the Thai, but all over Southeast Asia, they use a lot of both of the sweet rice or glutinous rice flour. Japan, they use sweet rice. They call sweet rice, basically similar to glutinous rice. Okay, in Southeast Asia, they normally refer to as normai. This man, that, that means glutinous rice, sticky rice. The kernel of long green rice is longer and skinnier, longer. like basmati rice. So and the glutinous rice is short and, and, and round, just like a, a, a beer barrel, okay? So stickier, much stickier. So when you want to cook something like the Thai um, sweet rice, Thai glutinous rice with a coconut milk and fresh mango, then you use glutinous rice. So it does stick more. Yeah, there... stick, stick. When you make dumpling, when you make mochi, when you make mochi dumpling, you use sweet rice or glutinous rice. And do you cook it differently? More water, less water? You use less water. Uh, glutinous rice, normally when you cook rice, is one portion of rice, one and a half portion of water for long grain rice in general. Okay. But for glutinous rice, you use one around one to one. I don't want to be too mushy, too, too thick. Great. Boy, you cleared that up. That was a mystery. Here's yeah. another. Don't question. use too much water. <clears throat> Otherwise, you turn into a glue. <laughs> I've done that. Is there a meal from childhood that you love to eat, Chef? Or love I, um, I love uh, one, one dish meal. Clay pot cooking, hot pot, like hot fondue. Pot. I love those because everybody, the whole family, stand around, sit around, and enjoy the conversation, and chit chat, and communicate. And get to know each other more. Uh, get to know uh, the parent. Get to know what the children is doing during the day. And then that's the reason why I think it's it's good to have to actually have um, 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 wonderful um, one pot meal, particularly clay pot cooking. Clay pot cooking too. Clay pot cooking is very very popular. One pot meal, clay pot cooking. And I want to show them the uh, the gluten, the rice, the sweet rice. I want to show you the sweet rice. I have some sweet rice over here, and then I'll show you some sweet rice. So, and I also I compare with the glutinous rice, so you can see the difference, okay? And the glutinous rice, as I said, is much shorter, a little bit rounder, and then this is the look of a glutinous rice or sweet rice. This is Japanese sweet rice. Oh, it's kind of- The glutinous rice is about the same shape, but more translucent. This is very milky. This is the Japanese style sweet rice. Okay, so it's right, it's shorter and then rounder like this. And then you know, on the, on the other hand, the, the this is a difference. Long grain rice on the right. This is long grain rice. This is glutinous rice. Can you see the shape? Absolutely different. Yeah. Yeah, very very different. This looks okay. like pastry so, you would. Use for yeah, I, I put this over here. You can even see better. Okay, I put it over here. Look at that. Oh, look at this. Just... Look at this. Look at this. Look at look, look. You can see the difference, right? Yeah, easily. Yeah. So look, look at this. This is long and skinny, and this is short <laughs> and a it. little bit overweight. <laughs> and then you know what? I every day I eat this. What is that? Nuts? This is multi grain rice. It's about eight different grain. Wow. Wild rice, black rice, brown rice, um, uh, white rice, all kinds of stuff. And this is the healthiest one because this one, when you eat something like this, it turns into sugar pretty fast. Yeah. So if you have diabetes and you uh, want to control weight, try to stay away from eating too much rice. It turns turn into sugar because this is starch, pure starch. Starch, when it's digest, turn into sugar, okay? Now this had the rice hole, and this is how it looks. Look at that, this, yeah. this is it. Can you see that? And this multi-grain rice, multi-grain rice like this. Definitely. So you can see even rice, there are all kinds of different rice. There's a basmati rice, there's a, 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 the, 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 the jasmine rice, that is um, 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 
Actually, America produced in California. You live in California. You know what California is famous for? Carol's rice, which yeah. is medium grain rice, exported to Korea, Japan, Taiwan, all over the world because they are the best rice to use for sushi. You don't want to use sweet rice or gluten or try to make sushi. Otherwise, they stuck. You know, you cannot fold it. So now I want to show you also the gluten. I mean, the uh, the medium grain rice. The medium grain rice is also very, very good. So you have long grain rice, sweet rice or glutinous rice. And now I want to show you the medium grain rice that a lot of people use it for. Uh, let me show you. I want to show you the medium green rice. Now this is medium green rice. Look at that. This is the Japanese sushi rice, medium green rice. And then you can tell the difference between the medium green rice and the long green rice. Can you see that close up? Yep, look at that. So, so today is a lesson on rice because my master degree thesis is on the processing the effect of processing on rice. And removing the bran and what that's yeah you you when you remove the bran then you have all of these so that's the reason why but the, the reality is the health the nutrients the goodies is on the bran on the rice bran that's why you can buy rice bran okay these are the good so if I were you I'll eat more brown rice wild rice and multi-grain rice so good more minerals more health more fiber right you know, people are asking more questions though. They do, we've got a bunch here and we can get to. There's one that says, are there any foods in Chinese medicine that help calm the nervous system, help with anxiety? What would be Yes, like? yes, yes. Okay. Actually, this is one of them. This is one of them, goji berry. Oh. You eat it as a snack, okay? And then the most important thing is, uh, um, all of these herbs are very good. In fact, ginseng is also very good. It has a calming effect. And, uh, and uh, tangerine peel, tangerine peel is also very good. I actually make my own tangerine peel. Look at that. I dried it up. I buy the tangerine and I dried it up myself. Look at it. Oh, that's the actual tangerine. I thought it was something else altogether. Yeah, sun dry. I just put it, don't put it in, a, in the, uh, um, don't put it in the, uh, the oven. No, just let it naturally dry. Let it naturally sun dry because during the drying up, they high kind of kind of fermented, naturally fermented and create that wonderful aroma. Okay. okay? Never throw anything away. Even a pomelo, and with pomelo, um, at the Chinese chef, particularly Cantonese chef, they use the pomelo, pomelo um, skin to cook a dish. Cool. And just like uh, I have lemon, in my in my in my backyard, lemon use lemon zest use lemon lemon's really good. Lemon and green tea is good for fruit. Now here is a pomelo, a pomelo, and when you cut the pomelo, you cut it up like this. Okay, one and two and and three, and you just hold, open it up like this. And you push it down. Push it down, push it down, push it down, push it down. It's like a grapefruit. Yeah, it's a grapefruit. It's a it's grapefruit. pomelo, Chinese grapefruit. You hold on to this, and, you're gonna, and then this pomelo, when you open it up, it looks beautiful like that. Look at that. This is pomelo, my, one of my favorite food. Absolutely. Look at pomelo. Isn't it nice? Loaded with vitamins. Hello. Yeah, wonderful. Vitamin C, all kind of. And then, you know what we do? Lemon. We will dry this up. Oh. We'll dry this up. And after you dry this up, you peel this a little bit, the rind. Okay, you peel this. After you dry it up, and I put this in to casserole dish. Yeah. Smells so good. It smells really good. One of these pomelo, show me another pomelo. Let me show you another pomelo. The pomelo you put in your kitchen, you put the pomelo in the kitchen. It is so fragrant, so aromatic, better than those sprays. 
pomelo, you put it in your kitchen right here. The whole kitchen smell wonderful. It's a great fruit, great fruit. And I also, and they last for a long time. I have this for almost uh, four weeks already no because kidding. they're so thick. Look at how thick the skin is. Yeah, when the good. skin is so thick, they don't dry it up at all. So that's the reason why they're so wonderful. Well, we've got so, somebody who's intolerant to soybeans. You know, this is sad. She can't eat soybean or tofu or soy oil. And oh, oh yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize, Please. a lot of people don't uh, realize uh, oh, before I forget, pomelo is often, because Chinese New Year, pomelo is often available and often used in, uh, for display, for giving out as, 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 a, as a gift, because pomelo in Chinese more, lo yao means abundance. Abundance. Abundance supply. So it's, uh, with this, you give it to your friend to symbolize abundant supply of Good luck, good fortune, happiness. Like and then this is another one that I grow in my backyard. Look at that. Oh, this is citrus. This is basically a citrus and smells really good. Look at that. How beautiful. Same thing. It looks Look at like that. an enemy. Oh. Yeah. It is called, it's called Buddha's hand. Buddha's hand. Buddha's hand. Look at that. Yeah, Buddha's hand. It's very, very popular. Uh, in Thailand and Vietnam, use it for display. It's really, really good. So all of these are not only eat served as a vegetable, uh, as a, as a fruit, but has a lot of health benefits. Vitamin C, loaded with vitamins, all kind of stuff. So I like to take this opportunity also to tell you, when people celebrate Chinese New Year, the first day they always serve a vegetarian dish. So now you know that. I have this, I have this, I have all of these, a the whole meal. So oh, this God. is time for dinner. <laughs> really? <laughs> what is that? It's a beautiful sound. You cook with it? No, it's just a gun. Oh, Amazing. We can get all that noise. <laughs> well, I am truly honored and privileged today to share my love and my passion of food and my travel and all the wonderful things that about herbs, about health, about rice with you locally, nationally, and internationally. It is truly an honor. I hope um, we'll meet again when I travel around the world. And just remember, if Yen can cook, so can you. You know, I think that you have shared some of the most incredible ancient wisdom that's honed through centuries, Chinese wisdom about foods and food as medicine, food as preventive medicine for long lasting yeah. lives. So thank you so much, Chef Chan. It's just, Chef Yan, it's been a, just a pleasure seeing you in action again. I love that part. And, uh, I'm so glad we share the same stage and to, um, to uh, spread the good word, the good word about yin and yang, about balance, about, you know, people say, oh, during the pandemic, shelter in place, I am bored, I don't know what to do. Find something to do. Keep yourself occupied and enjoy things that you normally don't have the time to do. When I used to travel so much, now I work in my garden. I have a vegetable garden, I have an herb garden. Because of that, it gave me the opportunity to continue to enjoy life. And all you have to do is, for more recipe, visit yencancook.com. And then also go to Facebook and the Instagram. Go to Facebook and Instagram, Yen Can Cook. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for your generous time you've shared here with CIIS and with all of our audience. They're going to be watching for years to come, I believe. So, yeah. Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Chef, uh, Chef Martin Yen at uh, Facebook and Instagram. Okay. And we'll offer you some more insight and some more wonderful recipe. Right. And in the meantime, I will send you a special gift because we share the same vision, we share the same passion about food, culture, history, her heritage, 
This is what makes America such a great country. We all are together and we all share the wonderful things about different culture. And then this is amazing place to live. And I believe we all appreciate being in America and God bless America. What a positive message for right now when people need it more than ever. Thank you, Chef. We'll wrap up and say back to you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you all so much for attending today. We hope you will join us for more of our upcoming talks and workshops. This conversation was recorded. If you would like to watch it again or share it with your community, it will be available on our YouTube channel at this same link and on our Facebook page. We will also feature this talk on our podcast, which you can find at www.ciispod.com or by searching CIIS Public Programs on your favorite podcast app. Thanks again for joining us and have a wonderful evening.